Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at MySQL database engines. So, um, although this is not a tutorial on MySQL database administration, it is a tutorial on using MySQL as, as an end user and on um, learning SQL and working with a MySQL database. Nevertheless, there are some configura configuration options that affect how MySQL works. So before we go any further, we're going to have to take a look at some configuration related stuff um, because um, you're going to need to know that in order to predict how your queries are actually going to work. So um, I'm, I've already typed to uh, use tutorial one, but there's no harm in typing it again. So we're using the right database. And now I'm going to type show engines and execute that. Now, what a MySQL engine is, is it's a, a module, a part of MySQL that deals with your SQL and constructs tables, basically. Um, I'm not sure if um, the actual code that passes your query is, is part of the engine, but certainly the part of MySQL that constructs tables and decides what they can do and what they can't do. That's called an engine. And there are, MySQL supports various different engines. Now, most of these I haven't used, but there are two really important ones that you should know about. Historically, MySQL, as, as I remember it, this is according to my memory, and I've been working with MySQL probably since around 1999, I think. Um, historically, MySQL was built around, and I don't know how to pronounce these names, but I'll make up a pronunciation. It was built around this MyISAM engine. Now, that was, well, it was a good start, but it didn't support some really important features of databases. It didn't support, as I remember it, it didn't support transactions, and I, I presume still doesn't. It didn't support foreign keys even, which, as we'll see later on, are really important to use. So it was a big step forward later on when MySQL came out with this inodb engine, which does support transactions, does support foreign keys. And if you do show engines, hopefully you'll see that inodb is set to the default. Now it is possible to change which engine you use and you're probably not going to want to. Uh, for this tutorial, you're gonna to want to make sure that inodb is the default engine, unless there's something even newer and better that's come out since this tutorial, in which case you could switch to that. But in this tutorial, we're gonna be using the inodb engine. It is possible to, um, it's possible to specify on a table by table basis, which engine your table uses. And again, most of the time, that's probably gonna be pretty useless, but it's, it's quite common that if you see a, a SQL script that's um, intended to be executed to create a complete database. After every table, it will specify which engine each table is using, and it's normally gonna be the same engine every time, and it's normally gonna be inodb. Uh, so in case you see that in a script, it's kind of important to know about. If we type in here, show table status, we can see which engine each of our um, tables is using. We've only got one table at the moment and it's using the default inodb, but I could change that and there are a number of ways I could change it. So let's create a table. Let's call it test and I'll give it just one column. So let's say id int and I'm going to say next after this bracket, I'm going to say engine equals and pick a different engine. So the only one I've actually used is this my ISAM. So let's go ahead and try that. So I've, I've executed that, I've created the table, and now let's look at show table status. And we see that we've got a test table using this my ISAM uh, database. I'm going to um, delete that for the moment. Let's say drop table test, and we'll see another way of doing that. So another way you could do this is you could set the default storage engine for your, um, for your session. So you could say set default, uh, yeah, this is right, I think, set default storage engine equals my ISAM. Let's try that, looks good. 
And now let's um, let's do show tables. So there, there are the tables, just to remind ourselves, we've only got one table now called users. And I'm going to do uh, show table status. Okay, that's good. And let's also do show engine. So we see that this one table we've got users is using inodb as we saw before. Let's say, let's do show engines. Now we can see that my ISAM is set to the default. So we'll try creating another table. So create table, I'll call it test again, and we'll say uh, it's just got one column ID. And I won't specify a storage engine, so I'll execute that. And then we'll do show table status. And now we can see that the default really has been changed to my ISAM, as we, we also saw when we did, um, when we did show, show engines. Struggling to remember because these are commands that, that I very infrequently use. Most of the time you don't need to bother with this, but I just want to show you, show you this so you kind of are familiar with it and you're not puzzled if you come across it. And you do want to make sure with show engines, you do want to make sure that inodb is set to the default. So let's uh, let's set inodb back to the back to the default. Let's say set default storage engine equals inodb. I don't think the capital letters make a difference there, um, but I'll put it all in capitals because that definitely works. And then again, we'll do show engines. And now we can see, yeah, I know DB is back to the default. Now, if you, let's say you've got MySQL installed and you find you're using, it's, it's a recent version of MySQL, so it supports I know DB, but you're, for some crazy reason, you find that it's using my ISAM. Uh, you can change it in your session, as we've just seen, or you can specify it after every table that you should use I know DB if necessary. If you're the administer, uh, administrator of your um, MySQL uh, server yourself, you can also change this in the config file. So this is, this is not, this is kind of taking us a little bit away from the point of this um, course as a whole, but I'm just going to demonstrate that quickly. So if you look in the MySQL folder, you'll find there's a MySQL dot cnf if you're using linux or some kind of unix type system like the mac and it's probably going to be called dot any if you're using windows now although this is present in my mysql installation folder here in fact on the mac and you you would have to check this if you want to do it, if you want to do it for windows you have to check where the default location of this file actually is because it's actually not here this isn't the one that's actually being read on my on my system which is a mac so let's go to a terminal now. And again, if you're not familiar with the terminal, really don't worry about it because this is taking us off the main point of this tutorial anyway. But what I had to do was I had to go to um, where this file is actually located. Let's go to CD user local MySQL, which is where it happens to be create, happens to be located on my Mac and it could be different for yours. And this is it's really just a kind of demo dummy um, configuration file. And if we look at it, it's pretty simple. Um, it's just most of, the, most of these options are just comments or they're just commented out. But what I did do, what I've already done here, I've added this myself because at least in my version here, it didn't already exist. I've added this option default storage engine equals my ISAM. So this is how you can configure it if you want to. So on my Mac, the actual location that this file is really read from is in slash etc. And of course, it's going to be different on different systems. So you have to Google this if you want to do it. So here's my my.cnf, or it will be my.any on Windows. I'm going to do sudo via my.cnf. So I'm just using some Unix commands that I'm familiar with already. But um, you could edit this in any editor as long as you have to make sure it's not read only. Otherwise, you know, you're not going to be able to save it. And let's first check that there isn't already a default storage engine option in there. And there isn't here. So let's add it. In fact, let's stop the server first. Let's go to system preferences and just, I'm going to stop the MySQL server. 
um, if I get the right admin password for my Mac, it will really help a lot. More haste and less speed. Okay, so I've stopped it. Now I'm going to put in here default storage engine, just like the I, I edited the non-working demo version, but now I'm really editing the version that's actually being used. So I'm going to put my iSAM right in here in this MySQL D section. So I've, I've saved that and I'm going to start my server again. Let's go to um, System Preferences, Start MySQL Server. Then I'll go back to my MySQL Workbench and I'm going to quit this tab because it's probably still not working. Reopen the connection and I'm going to do Show Engines. We don't actually have to do Use Database before Show Engines because Show Engines doesn't apply to a particular database. And we can see here that my ISAM is set to the default. So before I do anything else, I'm going to set it back to inodb because um, inodb is the one, at least at the moment, that you really want to be using. So I'm just going to comment this out with a hash sign, which is a um, comment symbol that just turns this into a line that's not going to be actually read. And uh, I, I probably should have stopped the server really before I edited it. But in any case, I'm going to stop it now and restart it. And we're going to go to the workbench when it's running, do show engines. Uh, probably I need to reopen the connection. Show engines. And now we see inodb is the default again. So now the, the, the thing that you really want to take away from this tutorial is you need to do show engines and check that inodb is the default for your system. If it isn't, and you are the administrator of your server, you can change the default in a config file. And that will make sure that even after you restart the server, um, inodb will remain the default. If you're not the administrator, you have a choice between either using a set store set default storage engine set set storage engine is what it used to be but now it's set default storage engine equals inodb you could use that but you have to remember to do it every time you open a connection to mysql or you could specify it every time after you create a table like create table test um, it int engine equals equals I know DB but that's kind of a lot of hassle so if you're lucky just do show engines and you'll find it is the default already okay that's it for this tutorial until next time happy coding